Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Okay, this will probably be very quick. The snake will appear, strike, and disappear. Oh, we left our head out. Now, what I have here is a fang that I spy that was shed. So I have the fang, I'll show it to you in a moment, but let me safe the animal by closing its door. And then I'll drop it in my hand. That is a very recently shed fang from a Jararaca, Bothrops Jararaca, a snake that bites lots and lots of people in its native uh, Brazil. It's one of those uh, dream Bothrops uh, that I finally had the opportunity to add to the collection. They're very rare in the United States. I think the Kentucky Reptile Zoo is the only other place where uh, some Jararacas reside. I forget whether that's the male or the female. No, I think um, this one's the male. Ah, okay, so that's the male. They're actually uh, old enough to breed, I think. Uh, they, they did go off feed for a number of weeks. Um, and uh, Jim and Kristen at the Kentucky Reptile Zoo reported uh, uh, breeding activity. They put theirs together. They have some Jararacas and Jararacas uh, Sioux, uh, which is uh, another very large, heavy-bodied uh, Bothrops from Brazil. Um, I think they're the only place in the United States that has some, so um, I wish them the best of luck at breeding them. They're very cool animals, and of course I've always wanted to have some, um, but I probably uh, will never uh, be able to uh, raise uh, any uh, to adults. Um, Probably Jim and Kristen will get these Jararacas to add to their collection because the venom is value, very valuable. Um, I don't think any, any zoos uh, uh, will want them. Uh, Jim and Kristen, of course, want them for their venom. Uh, so let's put their venom to work for a positive result uh, rather than the negative result of them biting people in their native uh, country. Are we going to do it? Are we adjusting our jaws? Are we going to adjust our fangs and treat the people to a display of what those fangs look like uh, uh, when they're in there? Or are you waiting for us to leave so yes. you can comfortably eat? <laughs> the, the snakes really, really prefer uh, not to get caught with their mouth full. Um, so they will a lot of times wait uh, until we leave the room to eat. Others like um, Thud over there, he doesn't care. He, he knows that I'm not going to hurt him. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much all. Uh, that was that was pretty unusual for the girl. Uh, usually she's a strike and release kind of snake, uh, um, but you know, you, you get to see her and she held and uh, uh, Mrs. Viper Keeper can carefully uh, film for a moment or two and uh, uh, meanwhile Thud is moving over to this side because he knows <laughs> this is where I am and I have the food. Oh, 
could be channeling a death adder and doing a happy death adder. They may be doing happy bothrops. There we go. Well, I, I guess that's a close approximation to uh, happy bothrops. Uh, they have their cups. Uh, you know, the, the digestive tract gets, you know, very excited. Uh, nerves are firing and, you know, maybe causing it to, to have a little... Oh, whoa, oh, oh, look at oh, that. Oh. Yeah, see? When you weren't looking, uh, it decided that it was going to do the yawn. Of course. So, let's go ahead and shut this and uh, I think Mr. Brown would like something to eat next. Echisosalatus really need their enclosure cleaned. Uh, you know, it's just that uh, we're trying to have as little contact with these guys as possible because of uh, the COVID situation. One doesn't want to get bit with this and go to an ER and get, you know, be stuck in there without an advocate. Come on. This is the girl. As you can see, she's quite lovely. Certainly one of the prettiest of the Echis uh, group. And she's going to saw scale for us, and she's going to strike, I bet. <laughs> so just don't be surprised, Lori. I know. I'm well aware of the propensity. Nice display. Yeah, she's unhappy. I mean, you know, we don't disturb our snakes uh, very often at all. Uh, and uh, they're not happy when we have to because uh, we need to do something uh, in their cage. Echisosalatus in West Africa kills more people than uh, probably all the other snakes combined in Africa. Their venom is particularly toxic to humans and uh, they, they do like uh, to go where humans are because they eat, uh, provide the best habitat and a good food source for them by attracting specialized scales that they rub together to make that sound. Yeah, matter of fact, you recently saw the picture that I took. Those were actually Echis uh, leucogaster scales, but they all have them. They're, they're highly ridged and like teeth on a saw blade. noise when the snakes uh, rub them together. Yeah, I see you giving me the stink eye. Yeah. I think this amount of substrate is going to have to do the trick because I'm out of the substrate. I didn't even know that. She's getting upset every time Al comes and stands over her. And 
that's why she's doing right. this. Well, let's put her back in there and see if she'll hook. Relax, girly. Relax, girly. Oh, isn't she a nice snake? There you go. Go back into your hut. There you are. Oh, we're happy. We're home. She's uh, nice and uh, robust, so I'm not going to even uh, feed her this week. Now, I don't have any substrate to clean the mail, so we're going to have That's to... That's it, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to put that off. I'll have to, I'll have to stop by a pet store or order some and have it delivered. Um, but right now, um, that's it. I'm out of that particular variety of substrate. Hello, Mr. Blue Eyes.